Good morning and welcome to the second part of the virtual mission on smart and e-mobility, uh, the policy dialogue. It is my honor and pleasure to welcome you to this event uh, and to uh, guide you through this policy dialogue together with my colleague, Consul General Herbert Kunst. My name is Jan Top and I work for the Consul General as well. But before we go ahead, I'd like to quickly uh, introduce you to the setup of the meeting. We're having five panelists. We're going to start with three short statements introduced by both Gerbert and me, and we're going to end, conclude with, two, uh, with a discussion and a dialogue between Commissioner Monaghan and the Vice Minister of the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management. One quick thing I'd like to mention is that we're having uh, the opportunity for you to ask questions. So if you have questions, put them in a the chat box, and then um, yeah, we'd like to address them during the discussion. Um, Gerbert, over to you to introduce the first speaker of the policy dialogue. Well, thank you, Jan. Yeah, it's for me a great honor to introduce to you the Minister for the Environment, uh, Stientje van Veldhoven. She has led the delegation to San Francisco in September 2018 for the Global Climate Action Summit. Very successful uh, delegation visit. And uh, I would say, let's listen to the Minister. Dear all, happy to be with you at your digital trade mission. From my office in The Hague, I want to wish you lots of success. Because if there is one thing which we know in these trying times, it is that we need international cooperation. If we want to achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement, if we want to achieve our sustainable development goals, we are going to need to clean up transport, and we can only do that through international cooperation. And I think it was about two years ago that I was in California myself, seeing all of the opportunities. We both have the vision we both have innovative companies and we both have the drive to put things into practice. And that is exactly what is needed. So I hope that through this digital trade mission, you will reinforce existing ties. I hope you will find many new partners and I hope that jointly you can work towards driving this change faster and further. I wish you lots of success and I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you, thank you, Minister. Um, I'd like to introduce our second uh, speaker of the day, which is Jeff Allen. Jeff Allen works with Forth. He's the executive director of Forth, and he's been working with Forth since 2011. Uh, Forth is an organization which advances electric, smart, and shared transportation through demonstration projects and advocacy. Um, and it's also good to mention that Forth organized a couple of webinar, webinar panels, starting today and ending on Friday. And for you, the participants of this particular mission, uh, you, you've got full access to these different uh, webinar panels. So I'd like to encourage you to do that. I am definitely going to watch these different uh, uh, webinar panels myself as well. So Jeff, the floor is yours for a statement. Thank you. Thank you very much. And good morning. So normally, I would be welcoming you all here to Portland, just further up the West Coast, for an in-person delegation as part of the EVS conference and our own roadmap conference. And I'm very sad that we're not able to do that. Um, I've really enjoyed getting to know many of you over the last few years. Um, however, we are excited to be part of this first ever virtual trade mission. And we do hope to see you here in Portland uh, live next June uh, the 29th and 30th of June next year, we will be hosting Roadmap here again, and hopefully by then we'll be able to travel and to see each other in person. Uh, I do want to repeat how much we have enjoyed the partnership with the Netherlands over the last many years. Um, we've been working with many of the folks on this call and at the consulate, and one of the first trips I made uh, when I began this work a decade ago was to Eindhoven, which I probably just mispronounced terribly, uh, to see the great work that you all have been doing there. And we continue to believe that we have a tremendous amount to learn from one another uh, across the pond. And we are very excited to have signed a letter of intent uh, formally with Holiday Mobility and Coast to Coast to continue to strengthen our collaboration with each other. And I hope that you 
will consider us uh, another partner in the United States, and we stand ready to help you make connections, to build your presence here, to tackle these difficult uh, e-mobility problems together. On that note, uh, I think it's important to recognize the moment that we are in right now in the United States, that in addition to the pandemic of COVID, we are confronting our own pandemic of racism in this country. And it is more important now than it has ever been for us to prioritize equity as a core value in our work. Um, that will be the topic of our first webinar this morning. I know many of you have a conflict with that webinar, but I want to assure you that recordings of all of our webinars and our materials will be sent out to everyone who's registered, so you'll have a chance to catch up on that. We will also be hosting a conference on that topic November 20th, later this year. I think we have a tremendous amount of work to do in this area, not just in this country, but globally to make sure that these new mobility technologies make it to the people who need them the most, need affordable transportation and clean air the most. So with that, uh, I do hope you'll join some of our webinars this week. And um, I look forward to getting to know some of you, at least virtually through the matchmaking and, and through other uh, exchanges during the week. And I hope to see you all here next June in Portland. Thank you, Jeff, for your statement. And um, yeah, it's good that you were mentioning that the matchmaking is coming up in, on Wednesday as well, and you will be participating as well. So thank you for that. As, for, so thank you for that. Our next statement uh, is from Nancy Cabalt, and she's, from the, she's the chair from the Holland e-mobility platform. In this role, she represents a joint Dutch uh, approach of public and private partners for stimulating, promoting, and pursuing electric mobility in the Netherlands, and to seize, op seize opportunities uh, to promote green growth. So, Nancy, the floor is, floor is yours for a uh, statement. Thank you. Thank you for your introduction, and thank you, Jeff. I think it's very good that we are, as e-mobility um, people with large ambitions, are now in the first digital mission. So I think that's not a coincidence. I think that's something that suits us. So I'm proud to be part of that. Um, as I was introduced, I'm the chair of Holland e-mobility, and we are public and private partnerships with all kinds of stakeholders, from the automotive, but also the energy sector, from uh, knowledge institutions and NGOs, and also the Dutch government is involved. As you saw our minister, we have a very ambitious minister and uh, we are ready to seize all the opportunities to promote green growth. Um, I think we're also really looking at not wasting this crisis, this corona crisis, and making the change that we can do uh, sustainable for the future and actually try to make uh, the best of this uh, crisis. Um, the West Coast states are important for us. Um, they are very much our partners in developing electric and smart mobility. We need to exchange the knowledge. We need to exchange our in innovations. So we are really excited to keep working together on all these um, e-mobility challenges that we are facing. Um, public and private partnerships are also crucial for us uh, to keep us moving ahead. Uh, it cannot just be political ambition. It has to be the whole um, of parties together in order to uh, achieve the ambitions. Um, if you look at the U.S. and Dutch business community and the Minister of Infrastructure, we are showcasing our good relationships. And I think this mission is part of that. Doing that digitally is actually uh, an asset in this time. Uh, we are not losing connection. We are taking the time to make the connection. Um, and we signed a letter of intent, as Jeff already said, with Ford Mobility to further grow the e-mobility market. And we're proud to do that. Uh, one of our action was a combined effort at the EVS 33 in Portland. Unfortunately, it had to be canceled. But again, we're happy to engage in this digital way. And I hope this mission helps us further build on our relationships together. And I'm sure we'll be part of the live version of this event next year in Portland. Well, thank you very much, Nancy. And indeed, this is all about not losing our connection, our wonderful ties between the Netherlands and California. And I would like now to introduce... Commissioner Petty Monaghan, you've been appointed by Governor Newsom in April 2019, and you're serving your first term on the California Energy Commission. You fill the Commission's science and engineering position and would like to give you the floor. Well, thank you and good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here um, and a pleasure to see 
Jeff uh, remotely <laughs> and to be and to be talking about electric vehicles and uh, clean technology generally, which both you know this warms my heart. Um, I want to thank Ms. Cabal of Holland eMobility and Jeff from Forth for their partnership with this week's event. Um, I too feel sad that we're not all meeting in Portland, but next year we're going to be there. And we had talked about having an electric vehicle uh, caravan to Portland. So I'm hoping we can go from Sacramento to Portland, bring our friends from the Netherlands and maybe some other folks and, uh, and maybe, uh, you know, enjoy some stopping along the way safely, drinking beer perhaps in a few locations. <laughs> um, so let's, uh, let's plan for that for next year. So as Jeff said, there's no denying these are unprecedented times. Um, you know, in the midst of, of a pandemic, we're also experiencing a historic civil rights movement. So I, I too agree that equity has to be at the core of everything we do. We need to make sure that this is a clean electric future for everyone uh, and not just people who can afford to buy their own personal vehicles. So um, with everything happening in the world today, I cannot think of a better time for partnership and unity. Uh, that's why I'm grateful for this longstanding partnership that we have had with the Netherlands. Uh, California and the Netherlands are two lead uh, leaders in terms of uh, clean electric mobility and also in terms of the commitment to fighting climate change. So we've demonstrated to the world that clean energy and clean transportation are not just good for the planet, but also good for jobs, good for communities, good for our economy, and good for future generations. So at the Energy Commission, and I, I think I speak broadly for the whole state of California, we are unwavering in our commitment to achieve a clean energy future for California. Our state law requires that we, we achieve 100% clean electricity by 2045, that uh, we also have an executive order to have a carbon neutral economy by 2045. And really, the only way we do it is by electrifying transportation. Transportation is about half of all of our global warming pollution in the state, uh, and it's been creeping up as we've seen more vehicle miles traveled and people buying bigger vehicles. So it really, this is a problem we have to tackle. Electrification is a core solution. And luckily, on the grid side, we are, we're seeing you know, our grid is getting cleaner by the day. So right now, 63% of our electricity comes from carbon-free sources. About 36% of that is from renewables, so primarily wind and solar. And just last year, we achieved a major milestone of having 1 million solar roofs installed on homes, schools, farms, and businesses across the state. And I... To me, what gives me a lot of hope around uh, cleaner transportation is that we're, we're seeing clean energy just take over the grid in a very short period of time. And the reason it did is because prices dropped, the global market grew, prices fell, and renewables became cheaper than conventional vehicles, I mean, than conventional fuels. And now we need to do the same on the transportation side. So, uh, I think you all know, but I'll just reiterate, California is home to half of all the electric vehicles in the United States. Um, and I, I continue to push like Bloomberg New Energy Finance, you should be looking at California as a country. Like we are big enough, we are influential enough, and our commitment to clean energy is strong enough that we need to be sort of not defined by the United States and by the, laggard, <laughs> the laggardly ways I think of our national government but really by the proactive ways that California is helping to lead the world. Um, so just earlier this month, we learned that the Tesla Model 3 outsold every other car model in California in the first half of 2020. So more than the Honda Civic, more than the Toyota Camry, more than the RAV4, and that is really something to celebrate. We also learned that uh, electric vehicles are our number one export. And that is largely because of the Model 3, uh, but not solely because of the Model 3. We also have 18 electric vehicle manufacturers, arguably Silicon Valley and parts of Los Angeles are becoming like the new Detroit. Uh, you know, California is arguably the new Michigan when it comes to electric vehicles, but also when it comes to um, alternative mobility, to automation. Uh, there's just like a wealth of um, 
of innovation happening across the state. And that's why this discussion, uh, trade, this virtual trade mission, I think is particularly interesting as we think about how do we cultivate job, good jobs? How do we cultivate businesses to thrive in this new energy economy? And how do we create the right policies that allow those, those companies to thrive? Um, so we're also making considerable strides in deploying infrastructure to, to support hydrogen. It's probably worth the discussion about the role of hydrogen and fuel cells going forward. But California currently has 43 hydrogen stations open to the public. We have 20 stations under development. And we're also expanding our investments into medium and heavy duty uh, hydrogen and fuel cells because it, we're not convinced that batteries can do it all. Um, and I, I, as I said before, I mean, California didn't get here because of pure market forces. California got here because of uh, regulation and the brute force of regulations paired with the, the carrots of incentives. We created a policy regime here of incentives and regulations that propelled California into the international spotlight for zero emission vehicle deployment. The reason Tesla survives today and flourishes today is arguably because of the zero emission vehicle mandate and other policies in California. So as I said earlier, we're also here today because transportation is an equity issue. Our most vulnerable communities are disproportionately impacted by air pollution. The reason California can set vehicle standards is because our air quality is, has historically been so terrible. We have uh, two of the most, the dirt, air, air districts with the dirtiest air in the country. And we are uh, you know, committed to making sure that we clean our air and we help communities that are most burdened by air pollution. So we also uh, owe a lot of our success to international partnerships like the one we have with the Netherlands. Um, uh, I would say also with China, as you know, China has adopted the California zero emission vehicle mandate. China is undeniably an important market that we're all looking at in terms of how, how influential China can be in driving down the price of batteries and other zero emission vehicle technologies. But working together with the Netherlands just strengthens our mutual goals. So there's a lot to do before we reach a tipping point in electric vehicle adoption and we reach a carbon-free economy. We need to better integrate zero emission vehicles with the grid. I know that's something that the Netherlands is thinking a lot about. That is something that weighs on us. We have curtailed renewables that if we were able to capitalize on them, uh, in some months, the amount of renewable energy that we curtail could fuel every single one of our battery electric vehicles. So it's a matter of setting the right policies. So we're, we have like an EV happy hour and these EVs are charging at a time, the time of the day when we have a lot of excess renewable energy. We also need to make sure there's a, a proper workforce that's trained and, uh, and knows how to work safely with the vehicles and with the infrastructure. And there's clear access to, uh, to good jobs. So finally, we wanna make sure that everyone benefits as we move to a carbon-free future. So uh, thank you. I really look forward to, in the future, seeing you all in person in Portland <laughs> next year <laughs> and maybe even driving together uh, on an EV road trip, which I think would be really fun. Well, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you for sharing with us your ambitious goals on electrifying transportation and as well for mentioning hydrogen and heavy-duty batteries. Those are the topics of our webinars later this week as well. And I would really like to invite the audience to bring in some questions for our speakers today. And with that, I would like to introduce the Vice Minister of the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water, Robert Lapere. He led a delegation to San Francisco, to Los Angeles, last year, November. And he brought a delegation focused on circular economy, water and mobility, of course. Vice Minister, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Herbert. And let me say good morning to, to San Francisco, to Sacramento and to Portland. And of course, I'm saying good morning from a late afternoon in my, in my hometown of, of Gouda. Uh, great, uh, great to see you all. Great to see you, Commissioner uh, Monaghan. Um, if my memory serves me well, we met at the, uh, at the Leland Stanford Mansion in Sacramento last uh, November when indeed our delegation uh, was there. And I already look forward to joining that uh, that EV road trip to, uh, to Portland uh, next year. Uh, great to be joining you. And um, I would like to say um, 
as as we all um, are aiming to uh, rebound and emerge better from the COVID-19 uh, pandemic we're in, there indeed is an, uh, an important and not to miss opportunity to, uh, to bring a zero emission future closer. So uh, we shake hands with you in that, uh, in that ambition, uh, albeit uh, virtually uh, today, of course. Um, the Netherlands is, is very determined to accelerate its, uh, its impact and activities for, uh, for zero emission as we must step up our efforts uh, to meet the targets we've, uh, we've set ourselves, like, uh, like you have set a very ambition, uh, ambitious targets when it comes to, uh, to air pollution, to reducing CO2 emissions and to combating congestion. Uh, we believe we need to act now and to accelerate now. And in doing so, of course, we look at the national level as well as the local policy level across a diverse range of, uh, of areas. We look at vehicles, at energy carriers, at behavior, of course, uh, the way we transport ourselves, we transport people and we transport goods, uh, be it by car, by truck, by bicycle, by train, by bus, airplane or, or ship. So uh, old or new means of, of transportation, we should all have them in, in view and, uh, and work to, uh, to make them uh, zero emission. Smarter ways to change and better ways to make them user friendly. And in answering the question how to reach cost parity and to boost um, earning potential, we break down our zero emission strategy into five themes. The first is, of course, energy transition, uh, ensuring that it is indeed zero emission. The second is know-how, uh, sharing knowledge. The third is, is infrastructure, encourage easy use because uh, your customer, of course, drives your innovation. And the fourth is mobility concepts. And this is because we believe connecting science uh, and, and do so interdisciplinary is, is, is hugely important. And the last, the fifth, is industry, uh, supporting entrepreneurship as business gives power to the possible. And it's great to see so many businesses participating today. I'm delighted that we can work together with um, the West Coast, with California, with the other West Coast states. And um, we, uh, we've been working closely together uh, as founding members, of course, of the Zero Emission uh, Vehicle Alliance, we uh, we were both, I think, uh, instrumental in found, founding that alliance. Very happy also that uh, the state of California is part of the Transport Decarbonization Alliance, uh, and it's great to have such a prominent member on board. And uh, Commissioner Monahan, you said California can be seen as a country, and indeed, I can confirm we do see you as a as a country, as a large and very impactful uh, country. You also said that the Tesla Model 3 was the best sold car uh, in California, if, uh, if I understood you correctly. And uh, I can confirm that uh, indeed in the Netherlands, the best sold car last year was the Tesla Model 3. So I'm not surprised to hear that um, uh, electric vehicles are your number one export uh, item because indeed many of them are driving on our roads. Um, Last November, I had the honor of, uh, of leading uh, a very successful Dutch trade mission to, to California. Uh, in Sacramento, we also signed a letter of, uh, a letter of intent in the field of, uh, of sustainable uh, mobility. And the fact that we are now uh, coming to California again uh, in a virtual, with a virtual mission, I think uh, shares the, the, the eagerness and the willingness of, of the Netherlands and, and Dutch companies to, uh, to indeed uh, work together with uh, with you and uh, and your uh, your businesses. Um, in closing, I would also like to address the entrepreneurs participating uh, in this week, in this mission, and in this session. Uh, you have a key role in the tra transition to a zero emission uh, uh, vehicle uh, future, and I'm proud that both West Coast entrepreneurs and Dutch entrepreneurs have taken the lead. Uh, during the trade mission in November, I've seen uh, how uh, how companies from both our our countries from both our regions uh, are pioneering uh, and 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 with an uh, innovative spirit. So uh, I'm very I'm very um, sure we will uh, we will uh, have a lot of progress uh, together. So in the light of the ongoing worldwide efforts to combat COVID-19, I believe more than ever it's up to us to find opportunities uh, for green growth that will allow to get us uh, new business models and running. Uh, and get them running before the old ones expire. We must indeed build back together. 
We're here with over 60 Dutch companies participating and uh, a considerable number of American companies. And I'm confident the chances uh, that will present themselves, the new contacts that will be, uh, will be there uh, will, uh, uh, will continue and, and make our close cooperation uh, even, even better. Um, I just heard that uh, maybe the Dutch are not good enough at showing off, uh, as I think Gigi uh, said uh, at the beginning. Uh, but be assured that we uh, do want to showcase ourselves here. And before I end, I would like uh, to show you something because I saw Commissioner Monaghan drinking from a water bottle. I actually have a water bottle here um, from, from, uh, last, uh, from last November, and it's a daily reminder of the importance of the cooperation between the West Coast and the Netherlands. So I hope uh, this, uh, this will be a reminder to all of us that the cooperation we have can uh, really bring us further, further. So thank you very much, and uh, and hope to be uh, hope to be there with you next year again. Just a short time schedule, so I would like maybe to proceed and thank you as well for both of your introductions and this water bottle. Let's go circular. I think is still a very accurate uh, advice. Let's go circular. We'll do. With the help both of the Commissioner and you, Vice Minister, we'll make it happen. And I would like now to introduce Baarte de Breij. He's the Chief International Officer. He's a participant in our digital trade mission. And he's working for ALAT, our Research and Knowledge in, um, Institute for Smart Charging. And he would like to present the Smart Charging Guide. Uh, Baarte, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much. Good morning, uh, Mrs. Monaghan, uh, Commissioner. Good morning, uh, Mr. Allen, good to see you all. Unfortunately, not on a road trip and not on the EV roadmap. Uh, we would like to uh, uh, present something uh, uh, to you. As you might know, e-mobility isn't new. It exists for over a hundred year, years. And my organization uh, exists for 10 years. And last year at the anniversary, we looked a little bit onto the past and the cleaning of e-mobility but we're looking also to the present, as mentioned um, um, by Commissioner Monaghan. Uh, we not only face um, a challenge in cleaning mobility, but also incorporated in the energy system, uh, combined with affordable housing and um, other challenges. So um, we, we looked a little bit to the past, to the present and to the future, and we... Um, published a book about it. It wasn't Dutch, uh, but everybody liked it so much in the Netherlands. And uh, Mr. Kunst asked uh, when I presented it in, uh, last November, can you translate it? And then you can present it in Sacramento and in Portland. Unfortunately, um, not live, but uh, be sure um, a digital copy is in your mailbox this afternoon. And we've also taken the liberty to, to send you a paper, an old-fashioned one, uh, to your office. Looking forward to see you um, uh, um, the, this fall or uh, spring next year, because there's a lot to do together between the Netherlands and California. So, for example, a test lab building together for those cars from California to the charging infrastructure in the Netherlands. It all must be aligned. Thank you very much, Herbert. Well, thank you very much, Baarte. It's very promising to see that you have a, an existing and a good working relation, but you either will, you're going to build on that, and perhaps we'll have in the future even a nice cooperation between the commissioner and your institute. That would be very nice. I just wanted maybe to give the commissioner uh, the opportunity for a short reaction, and after that I will ask uh, our vice minister, La Pere, to give his concluding remarks. Commissioner, the floor is yours. Well, I did take a look at the smart charging, uh, not just the brochure, it's the report, and I was really impressed. Um, I got to say, though, I, don't, I, I just got it this morning, so I, <laughs> I, was pretty, I went pretty quickly through it. I want to actually uh, dive more deeply into it. I sent it to all of our teams internally because I thought this is a really good model. Um, and I think this idea that we have to make sure that electric vehicles are integrated into the grid in a way that... Uh, from our perspective, you know, reduces rates for all electricity users and also provides other, other grid benefits. Um, if we don't 
do it right. So if electric vehicles are charged at, at um, peak times, we're going to have to generate more base load electricity. It's going to be harder for our grid to get cleaner. And that just poses challenges all the way around. So this idea of we need to make sure that vehicles are integrated smartly into the grid is a critical one. And one, I think that, um, as Bartha said, we need to work internationally on this. I mean, we, want, we need to make sure um, that we have standards that allow for vehicle grid integration to be seamless and global. We, I think in a light duty vehicle space, we have work to do. We kind of fell down on that one. I think we're doing better, I hope, on the heavy duty space, but that's, that is something that we need to work really closely together with to make sure that we do it, we do it right. So kudos to you and your team for that excellent report. Thanks for translating it into English. <laughs> that helps me a lot. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, uh, Commissioner Munhan. Uh, and Vice Minister Lapere would like to give you the floor for a short final comment to conclude this policy dialogue. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll do that very, very, uh, very brief. Indeed, kudos from my, uh, from my side as well for the work done. I fully agree with, with everything you just said, Commissioner Monaghan, on the importance of, of working together, both on, on charging infrastructure, as well as on the way we deal with, with standards uh, when it comes to, to, to charging. Uh, also, uh, the point you, you mentioned on heavy duty vehicles, we have some experience with this, but uh, making them zero emission, I think, is, uh, is a joint effort we should also share our experience and thoughts on. Having said that, I want to again wish everyone a very, very successful and good uh, virtual trading mission uh, this week. I think it's very important to keep up the momentum and to keep, uh, to keep up the contact. So uh, I wish you a very, very good mission. Thank you, uh, Vice Minister. And um, I'd like to conclude with a big shout out to all, uh, all panelists. So thank you, um, Minister of the Environment. Thank you, Jeff Allen from Forth. Thank you, Nancy Cabalt. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Monahan. And thank you, uh, Vice Minister Lapere. As has been said, we need knowledge and we need industry in order to, yeah, to work towards the carbon neutral uh, goals. Um, and uh, we have a lot of knowledge present here this week and we have a lot of industries present here this week. So I'd like to encourage you guys to ex exchange with each other uh, the knowledge you, you have and um, we have our platform available for that. Um, having said that, uh, we're gonna start with the opening session of this virtual mission on smart and e-mobility at nine o'clock in San Francisco and at six, six o'clock in the Netherlands. Once again, thank you so much.